Hello and welcome back to another match reaction. Wolverhampton Wanderers 1, West Ham United 2. Make sure to like the video and subscribe. We're in a different setting. It's still the same goal though. Road to 500 subscribers. We are nearly on 250, so let's make that happen. I've got the Brighton Arsenal game in the background. And currently the second half has just started as Wonder Arsenal. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, listen, today was a weird game. I didn't expect to win going into it. I said 1-1 one, one in my match prediction on my TikTok. I don't remember what I said on the match on the match preview on YouTube. I'm pretty sure I would have said like a draw or something. They didn't even have a striker up front. And we let them get an inch by that penalty. And not putting anything on them in the first half. That was a dreadful first half. It was, I would say it is one of the worst performances of the season. Um, in that first half. But... We've had a lot of them. We've had a lot of them. We've had, what, uh, Brentford away. We've had uh, Arsenal, <laughs> Arsenal at home. We've had a lot. We've had Man United away, like, that we played well. got a lot of shots off. I didn't do anything with it. We've had a few. I've probably even used bad examples as well. We've had Bournemouth at home. Bournemouth at home is awful as well. And there's not really many excuses. Up until the second half, when Bowen came off, we had a pretty much a fully fit side. Uh, apart from Ariola. But Fabianski's a trustable goalkeeper. Um, not as good as him as <clears throat> not as good as Ariola in terms of distribution, but he's just as good as a shot stopper. And he's probably better at commanding his box. So there was not really an excuse to not, you know, do more. And as soon as the first goal went in with the penalty, um, What's it? Um, the the attack line switched straight away. Every time we're under pressure, Moyes likes to move around the players up front. So you, you, that's why you see Will Prowse go on the left and Pakitar the 10 sometimes. That's why you see Kudus, Bowen and Pakitar switching today. Antonio was obviously rested, but we put him on in the second half anyway. Um, and you saw what happened when Antonio came on. It wasn't his best game, but he was an outlet regardless. Like, regardless, he was an outlet to get the ball too. And that was the point. And that was an awful first half. Now, when Bowen came off, he put on Aaron Cresswell. And Cresswell didn't do bad when he came on. And yes, it did free up Emerson going forward. But what does Corday... Like, this, if that doesn't give you more proof that Corday and Ings are not to be... They're not, they're, they might not even make another... They might not even play another minute this season. Like, like Corday definitely won't play another minute this season. And I'm surprised he was so patient in his quotes in his quotes when he was talking about lack of playing time and stuff like that. I am very surprised at that. But if because if I was Corne, I'd be way more impatient. Like the amount of minutes that he could have got and probably should have got is ridiculous. With Bowen out, you're probably gonna see that same three midfield, Alvarez, Ward Prowse, and Suchek. With Antonio Paquita and Kudus. Away at Leverkusen. And that Bowen injury is worrying. Because without the main three, we are fucked. Because we barely have an 11 as it is. Now, I'm going to get onto VAR in a minute. Because, whatever. I don't talk about VAR on the channel anymore. but Because I don't want to. But, we'll get onto that. Um, Obviously, they went a goal up. But in the second half, we had to come out and play. We don't really have much choice. I didn't, to be honest with you, I think the first 20 minutes, I still didn't think we were good enough. I think it went to the 66th minute, and I think we were still 1-0 down. Um, then we got a deserved penalty. Ben Johnson and uh, Antonio were the right subs for Sufal and Suchek, because Sufal was awful, as usual. And uh, Suchek was awful, as usual. And War Prowse was in his position, sort of, which was right. Um, Alvarez was fine Alvarez obviously made an impact Alvarez obviously was the solidity he was the the physicality the person playing deep line midfield that gives the balance towards someone like a James Ward-Prowse or a Thomas Suchek anyway but when we got that uh Go. I was. I think it was Johnson or 
No, it was Emerson, wasn't it? It was Emerson nicked the ball off and he kicked the ball into Kilman and he handballed it. Yeah, that was a definite penalty. And obviously, Emerson had a goal disallowed, which was soft. But here's what it is. It's a 90-minute game. Get on with it. We get a deserved penalty and McIntyre does what he does on penalties. He scores. I don't think I've seen him miss a penalty since he's joined us. He scored one from Brazil just before we came back from international break um, against Spain in the last minute. And... The right attitude was go and get the ball, let's get the winner. Uh, not None of this celebrating an equaliser and dancing because we needed to get a winner. Like We're not here to draw games, guys. We're actually here to win. And we're lucky that we won. But second goal, what was the second goal again? Oh, yeah, of course. How could I forget? Obviously, War Prowse, they keep the comment- commentary today. They kept fucking talking about War Prowse's record. If I had a penny for War Prowse, every time someone talked about War Prowse's record, I'd be a fucking millionaire. But Wolfram scored a corner. Now, these are the type of goals we're scoring to save this guy's job. And I'm happy with that in terms of the goals we're scoring and winning games. But I'm not obviously not happy with Moyes keeping his job. I'd rather just win games, you know. I'd rather everything just work the way it is. But it's, I know it's not going to. And I've been through it a million times. Why I don't think it's going to. But Wolfram scored a corner and I couldn't believe it went in. I don't think he tried to score from a corner. I really doubt he tried that. But regardless, it went in. Now, the problem is now, I think we're last 10 minutes of the game now. And I think it was we're in stoppage time. And then Wolves whip it in the corner. Max Kilman heads it in the, in the net. And I've watched, I'm watching, obviously, and I've got a bit of a delay on the link that I'm watching on. So when I go on Twitter and I see the goal's been disallowed... I'm thinking, huh? Hmm. Well, Wolves uh, didn't do anything in the second half. Don't get me wrong, but they should have had a goal. They should have had a goal. And, uh, but as I say for us, when we get robbed by VAR, I'm going to say the same thing for this. It's a 90-minute game. They should have tried better in the second half to get another goal. Like You can't always blame VAR. I haven't blamed VAR for West Ham. I'm not going to blame VAR for winning, but... VAR is shit for everyone. This is what we need to get into our heads. It may feel like because we support our clubs and we're emotionally invested that it's always against us, but that's not true. It's like every fan base thinks that the refs are against them. It's not true. It's never been true. They do have a slight bias towards big six clubs. Of course they do. And not even slight. It's a, a considerable bias. In certain, in certain situations. But let's not victimise ourselves all the time. Like, just as... Yeah, whatever. And that's the first time we've done a double over Wolves in. I can't remember how long. I think it's the first time in my lifetime we've done... No. Apart from lockdown. Um, I can't remember. But... I'm happy with the win. I'm happy with the points. I'm happy with the result. I'm not happy with... with the first half performance. The second half performance wasn't that good. And I don't get the narrative of our quality shine through. The reason why I don't get that is because we scored a corner and a penalty. We didn't really do anything. We didn't do anything. Like we didn't we just attacked. Like we didn't actually do anything with the attacks. Kudos wasn't good enough today. Pakatar wasn't good enough today. He scored the penalty, but he wasn't good enough. Uh Antonio was a focal point, but he wasn't doing much but he was just an outlet Emerson was bad in the first half but was good in the second half and there that is also down to him playing in a further forward position don't get me wrong but Emerson's played well at left back this season so if Moyes wants to think that he's going to start playing Cresswell left back and Emerson on the wing and it's going to work you'd be dead wrong we're not going to get away with those same kind of things in other games we're not but Again, just my opinion. I'm sure some people find a way to defend all of this, um, as usual. Ultimately, I'm just relieved that we got three points and we're not uh, dropping down the table. I do think it will happen eventually. This is why I think ninth is the place we'll finish, because we're shit. But a lot of teams around us are also shit. Man United are shit. Newcastle are shit. Fulham are good for Fulham. Bournemouth are good for Bournemouth. Brighton are good for Brighton. But around it, it's not exactly like great quality teams. 
Chelsea are shit. Like, these are teams that have been just as inconsistent as us. And from 7th to 13th, it's a battle for the last couple European places. If it goes down to 8 places in the league, then 8th could get you Conference League. 7th could get you Europa League. But if this manager stays next year, I will not be sober for any West Ham game if I have to watch that week in, week out. I will find a way to succumb to drinking before or during the match. Because I cannot watch that sober. I cannot watch that. I cannot watch Paketar on the left wing anymore. I cannot watch... Mohamed Kudus being restricted and Jared Bowen up front. I cannot watch Thomas Suchek anymore. I cannot watch Vladimir, Vladimir Sufa anymore. Cresswell wasn't bad when he came on. Johnson wasn't bad when he came on. I don't think Johnson did much. I just think Johnson was just better going forward in terms of like, most of Johnson's play was running down a line and just waiting for the defender to block, to block his cross. That's what Johnson's game usually is going forward. He's not that good going forward. He's usually just a good defender. He didn't really have to actually do much because Wolves didn't do much um, defensive work. I mean, attacking work for us to even really defend in the second half. But yeah, just my opinion. I'm going to watch the rest of this Arsenal game. Make sure to like the video and subscribe uh, if you want to. Social media is over in the description if you want to follow me in the email for the inquiries. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.